hosting another couple. The people are doubled up, tripled up in apartments across the city, and this is a part of the invisible homelessness situation mm -hmm. that we see in Nashville. And it ter causes terrible problems that we see throughout the city. The mayor uh, interested in trying to do something about youth violence. Well, this is a huge part of the youth mm -hmm. violence problem as well. If people don't have stable places to live, if they're in camps and they're threatened with eviction, wherever they're threatened with eviction, they ultimately, it, it increases the tensions and the problems within mm -hmm. the area. Um, there have been a series of apartments that have been bought out mm -hmm. and uh, turned into higher priced housing. Mm -hmm. Edmondson Manor, for example, um, and uh, the James Robertson, which still s s is empty. Mm -hmm. And all of these people have been forced into other places, often either outside of the county or into mm -hmm. literal homelessness. Now, Mr. Rodriguez, you talk about the uh, statistical information in reference to the uh, homeless population. Give us some information in reference to that and yeah. uh, how what we're doing here in Nashville differs from uh, some of the issues, some of the other areas that you might be familiar with. Yeah, so my, my focus in my research is, um, is national, although uh, in the last year or so I've tried to focus more, more on Nashville specifically. Um, what's, what's really striking to me is um, is, is how uh, normalized mass homelessness has, has become. Mm -hmm. So in um, leading up to the 1980s, um, homelessness was more or less cyclical. It would be tied a lot more to the labor market. When there was a lot of unemployment, there would be a lot more homelessness. When unemployment would go down, homelessness would tend, tend to go down too. Mm -hmm. But starting in the late 70s, early 1980s, uh, we started to see this sustained uh, mass homelessness and the and the bottom floor estimates today are about uh, half a million uh, nationally, although it's, um, uh, that's not counting a lot of people, so it's probably over, over a million at least. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, so, so one question I have is why, um, why, why is it we've, we've gotten used to it? We've, 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 we've adjusted to homelessness having a place in our society um, at this level, and, and so we need to do something to um, uh, introduce it. We need to uh, realize a different ethic, really. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so one, um, there there are several approaches being adopted by Nashville mm -hmm. to to reduce homelessness. I mean, um, there's a more more of the preventive side, uh, build, building affordable housing. Mm -hmm. there, um, that's uh, what what a lot of advocates here in Nashville are wanting to do. Um, once people um, uh, once people become homeless, one mm -hmm. debate nationally has been how do you, um, what, what's the best way to get people um, back into back housing? Back into housing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a real problem, you think, that, and, and, and you find that Nashville is no different in a real sense from a large number of urban areas, not only large mm -hmm. areas, but I would imagine that if you go in Smyrna, you'll find the same kind of issue. Perhaps it might, they might be more intense in Smyrna than they might be in Nashville simply because Smyrna, Smyrna probably does not have the resources, mm -hmm. really does not have the resources to uh, deal with that as, as part of the population. And so what we, we, we want to do, and we're coming uh, to the end of this second segment, what we want to do, we want to start with uh, Howard here mm -hmm. and to start talk about this issue of gentrification because I think that that is a real issue and uh, I think we see all of these great buildings going up in Nashville, uh, we're becoming uh, urban but in a real sense, we're, a large number of folks are suffering because of it. And so what we're going to do, we're going to take this first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. Three minutes, three minutes everything that you know that might be helpful in terms of what we're trying to accomplish here today, dealing with this issue of gentrification, you see. Okay. This is what we want, that, that's how we want to do it. And so okay. all of you have the information in reference to, the only thing I know is that everywhere I go, I see, I think that I'm in New England or somewhere, uh -huh. and I see all of these houses and some of the places that were dilapidated and whatever, you go by now and they've been rebuilt and they've got a nice front to it and there are different structures and something's going on there, but the same people that once lived there are no longer there uh -huh. and what happened. And so that's what, you know, okay. that, that's what I see. 
that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. That's why I was attracted to this yeah. as, as an issue here. Oh. Because, and so uh, you take about three minutes, mm -hmm. you take about three minutes, mm -hmm. you take about three minutes and, and, and deal with anything that you'd like to deal with, mm -hmm. with this issue of what? Gentrification. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay? You know, this is this is the last segment of three times five is fifteen segments we oh. had today. Started at ten thirty this morning. I'm trying to get out of here before two thirty, and everything's gone quite well. What time is it? <clears throat> One forty. Yeah, we're way ahead of schedule. You, know, that you can do a thirty-minute show in an hour, oh. forty-five <laughs> minutes really. Uh -huh. Thirty seconds out. We got slave labor. <laughs> Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. The topic is homeless displacement and gentrification in Music City. And we have with us uh, Mr. Allen, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, and uh, Lester, Mr. Lester. And so we have all three of you with us uh, during the final uh, 10 minutes that we have here. Uh, uh, let's start off, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Allen, by talking about this issue of gentrification and the impact that it has on uh, Nashville itself, and then you'll have three minutes, and you'll have three minutes. Well, being a Nashville, you know, I've watched Nashville change. Uh, all this land has been entrusted, so they have no place to go now but to the areas of poverty, mm -hmm. and that's through North Nashville and into East Nashville. And about four weeks ago on NPR, they said that they're doing gentrification in North Nashville, East Nashville, West Nashville, and South Nashville all at the same time. No other city is doing that, even though it's gentrification going on in other cities. If you go into Salem Town, which is connected to Germantown, it looks the same now. And these people, if they didn't want to sell, they have a law called eminent domain, so they will take it. Uh, North Nashville, they are building all kind of condominiums up and down Jefferson Street. They were getting ready to try to put a police station mm -hmm. there, and they're taking it one step at a time. When the Sufferdale New Baseball Stadium, that kicked off the whole ball game right there mm -hmm. because all you have to do is cross over Jefferson and you go into Germantown. Mm -hmm. And we see it, and, and it's, it's like the preachers aren't preaching about it or talking about it, and mm -hmm. the people act like they don't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's just really not a proper way of really calling this an it city because it's not an it city because everybody does not have a place to live to call sanctuary call a home mm -hmm. and so what we're saying mr rodriguez in a real sense that uh while we might talk about gentrification this really has an impact upon the lives of folks who are in those areas and i would imagine one of the uh solutions might be is to provide some kind of housing for the folks who are displaced. Is that what we're saying here? Yeah, uh, we, um, well, we need to find some way to, to prevent the, the destruction of, of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, and one, one reason is because it, well, it, it affects African American communities in, in particular um, and very hard. And that, that's one reason why um, that uh, after, after 1980, um, uh, African Americans have been uh, disproportionately homeless um, um, before 1980. Um, uh, that that wasn't really the case. So, um, so I think gentrification has something to do with that. So that no matter how old the structure might be, when you remove the structure, the the house itself, uh, no matter what the conditions might have been in that house, the people still had a place to go. Uh -huh. And when you move the remove the house, the people no longer have a place to go, and they are literally homeless. It's I guess this yeah. is what we talk about, the destruction of, uh, of, of the homeless population. Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we, um, it, it, used to be, it used to be a lot more common to have um, uh, single room occupancy homes, um, di different like really um, lower, lower quality homes while, you know, while not, not ideal, they were still something. Um, and, but, but as um, urban renewal has really really taken flight um that kind of housing has been uh, un destroyed in, in a lot of cities 
Well, Mr. Lester, in view of the fact that uh, everywhere you look, you see some kind of skyscraper going up in Nashville, which is to say that we have the ingenuity to build as many of these things as we possibly can and as fast as we possibly can. Cannot there be some kind of agreement that we can develop at least one or two of these large structures, uh, 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 you know, uh, homeless kind of structures that will allow for some of the individuals who are made absolutely homeless to have a place to lay their heads at night? Well, you point to the building of these buildings. A lot of, large part of this is tax finance. They give tax breaks to large developers over $300 million during the uh, period of Carl Dean uh, to build these places that, um, you know, the theory I suppose is that the, pro the uh, prosperity will trickle down. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it really has not trickled down. Poverty has increased dramatically in Nashville. It's, as I said, in one in five now, mm -hmm. uh, including 35,000 children. Um, and yes, the, there should be money available to build affordable housing. Now, we're not so interested in seeing it concentrate. I work with NOAA's Affordable Housing Task Force mm -hmm. as well as A Voice. And we don't really want to see it concentrated in large projects, mm -hmm. but uh, units spread yeah, throughout mm -hmm. the city so as that it, to break up the concentrated poverty. But also money can be provided to rehabilitate mm -hmm. housing that is falling apart or that people are in danger of losing. Uh, the problem is the mayor is conceived of it as a relatively small problem. Mm -hmm. She's pledged $10 million this year and potentially more without a, a mm -hmm. permanent source of funding. Mm -hmm. That's the amount we gave to the zoo mm -hmm. in the past couple of years. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. The zoo has a capital campaign of $160 million, largely for an African savanna exhibit. Mm -hmm. We feel like the city should have a larger capital campaign mm -hmm. for people who are either homeless or who are in danger of falling into uh, homelessness. Uh, and so it, it, it's unimaginable to me at least that the city can't find a, a dedicated source of mm -hmm. funding for the Barnes Affordable Housing mm -hmm. Trust Fund uh, to actually preserve and create new affordable housing. We believe 20,000 units or what's needed now. There are 14,000 people waiting for vouchers. Mm -hmm. And these are people, families, people with children, people that uh, are citizens, taxpayers who've lived here for a long time that desperately need some assistance. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rodriguez, in view of the fact that you have some knowledge in terms of what's going on nationally in reference to the homeless population, what city do you believe, uh, or what state do you believe uh, is doing the best in terms of trying to deal with the problems that we're talking about here today. I mean, uh, what state or city do you know that we can say that this is perhaps the best that they can do in reference to the homeless population dealing with this issue? Yeah, um, well, I would, I would say New York City uh, has had the most experience. Um, I, um, there are probably other cities um, that maybe have been a little more experimental and maybe have more successful policies. Um, I know uh, him in, uh, um, Hennepin County, Minnesota, for example, uh, has been um, talked about a lot. But um, New York City has been at this for, for a long time. So that's typically where um, researchers and policymakers um, tend, tend to go if, if they, they want ideas for policy. Well, now, now, Mr. Lester, do you think that uh, the kind of money that we spend on other issues outside of the homeless population, do you think that some of that money might be directed uh, toward uh, dealing with smaller units, not necessarily uh, congregating everybody in one building, but dealing with smaller, smaller units over a, a widespread area? Yes, I think that would be definitely the preferred solution. Um, the mayor has targeted some really good things uh, towards providing more money for schools and the like, but uh, I don't think she recognizes the severity of the problem and of the need for affordable and workforce housing. Mm -hmm. Over half the population of Nashville, the workers of Nashville, make less than $29,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And over half the renters are cost burdened. They can't really afford the housing that they're living in, mm -hmm. which puts them in danger all the time of becoming, uh, ending up on the street. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And so in a real sense, we've got a real issue here, but it's an issue that it, perhaps it can be solved by money. Money might not solve everything, but do you think that we can solve some of these issues by uh, uh, more money? 
I think so. Sure. That's one thing that it's going to take is money to change the policy. And then we forget about the large population that is incarcerated that mm -hmm. have mental illness. Mm -hmm. And they don't need to be locked up. But mm -hmm. the one day they're going to be free and they're not going to have a home. And the question that you asked Mr. Rodriguez earlier, if you mm -hmm. look at Sacramento and Pasadena mm -hmm. and Buffalo, they're doing a great job as far as eradicating the homelessness mm -hmm. right now. And so you would suggest those might be some issues, mm -hmm. some areas that we might look yes. in terms of policymakers yes. and accept. And, uh, and, and we're running out of time okay. here, but let me thank the three of you for thank bringing you. Uh, that excellent information because I think it gives us all, uh, at least it gives me a, 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 a better understanding of what's going on because wherever I go, over in North Nashville, East Nashville, and et cetera, mm -hmm. I see all of these uh, New England style homes that are there and I know that I understand yeah. all of these things are happening and so let me thank you and let me encourage our thank audience you. to tune in again next week for another informative edition of comments thank you and